Dragon's Dogma 2 is here. It has been an insane wait for this one. And whether you played the original or you're just really rusty because 12 years is a long time, there's some stuff that might be of your interest and isn't immediately said. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 Things Dragon's Dogma 2 doesn't tell you. Starting off with number 10, how to get an infinite get out of jail free card. It's all fun and games until you start throwing people off cliffs. Sure, nobody cares if you whack a guy with the sword once by mistake, but to do it a few times in a city guard, I'm uh, gonna attack you. These guys are surprisingly weak as far as RPG cops go, but if you're not careful, they're eventually gonna overwhelm you and you're off to the slammer. When you're locked up, there's a few ways out. You can either wait out your sentence, which can take a long time depending on your crimes. You can bribe your guards for an early release. That can be expensive, or you can break out. If you're lucky, sometimes they put you in a cell with a break of a wall, and escape is simple. But if you're locked up someplace with no other means to escape, you're going to have to use a makeshift jail key, which breaks after a single use. These things are rarely sold from merchants and can sometimes be found laying around, but the supply is pretty limited. But what if I told you there was an easy way to get a jail key that never breaks, and you can commit as many crimes as you want, no repercussions? Seriously, you can do it. All you have to do is take on the main story quest to rescue the Magistrate, which is one of the first ones you can do when you arrive in Vernworth. Accepting this quest gets you the key, which can be used as many times as you want. Of course, when you complete the quest, you have to give the key back, which limits how useful it can be. There is a way to keep this key permanently, though. All you have to do is accept the quest so you have it, then take an ox cart to the checkpoint village. There's a unique vendor in this town called the Scrap Salesman who can make counterfeit items. For just 5,000 gold, he'll make a copy of the jail key, and in this case, it's a perfect copy, so it works exactly the same as the regular item, no downsides or surprises. The one-time use makeshift jail key costs 3,000, so a permanent is only 2,000 more. That is an absolute steal. Now you're free to go give the real key back and continue using the fake one as much as you want. Cause all the chaos you can handle because there's nothing stopping you from walking right out of prison now. And number nine, you can avoid death by healing at the last minute. A little trick that's very useful, but not super obvious. One of the most useful properties of healing items in Dragon Dogma 2 is that unlike in most games, healing in this game is pretty instantaneous. The second you use your restorative, your health is immediately regained, whether you're being grappled by an enemy or you're still soaring through the air after getting smacked with a club. Doesn't matter if you can't control your character, you always heal, right? So that counts for moments where it looks like you should be dead, too. Even if an enemy completely drains your health, as long as you have some white health left to restore, you're safe. The time limit here is whenever you hit the ground. Uh, if you're falling over dead, as long as you heal before you hit the ground, you can remain alive. Of course, if you're knocked into the water or something or fall from a great height, doesn't really matter. You're dead either way. But if the only cause of death is an attack, heal as quickly as you can and you should survive. Another thing that's easy to forget is you can pause at any time. There is, of course, a menu when you pause, and from that menu, you can use a healing item. So if you're worried about the timing, there you go. At number eight, save money on inn visits and just buy a house. When you're starting out, the cost of staying in an inn can be super expensive. 2,000 gold just to restore my health and save the game? Come on, man. That's too much. Especially early in the game. So take advantage of this lifeline the moment it becomes available. After staying at the inn in Vernworth a few times, an NPC named Mildred is going to approach you in the back alley behind the star drop in. It's one of those encounters it's super easy to miss if you're not exploring the city very thoroughly. She'll ask you to watch her house for a week, after which she'll approach you outside the house and ask if you want to buy it. 20,000 gold. Might sound expensive, but believe me, it's worth it to never use the inn again. There's an item box here as well. Got that nice little added bonus. And you can also get rewards from uh, mail from quest characters, including a pretty powerful sword from the guard captain. So just save yourself some money and get this house as soon as possible. There's also another house to buy in the Noble Quarter, but it's a lot more expensive and it can wait for later. Stick to the starter home. The whole point is just not having to use the... You go, you go to the inn 10 times, you spent the same amount as buying this house. That's crazy. And number seven, there's a hidden elf village, and they don't tell you how to get there. Uh, it's probably one of the most intriguing secrets in the early part of Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, it's called Sacred Arbor. It's a town that's normally hidden and inaccessible to non-elves. It is worth hunting down, though. You get some pretty great rewards for finding it, and the shop sells some pretty powerful and exclusive items. Reaching it's not that hard if you know who to talk to. The easiest way to gain passage is to talk to this guy outside of the weapon shop. He's an elf 
who wants a human bow which you can either buy or just give him if you have a spare pretty much any bow you've got is going to do which implies this is not a discerning individual uh, could have gotten a bow pretty easily i think but let's not look a gift horse in the mouth it's not a quest it might be tempting to ignore him but if you do help him out he'll ask you to train with him in the ways of archery i was also rather hoping you would consider attending so to complete that quest you got to switch vocations to an archer which is easy to do when you unlock a vocation at the guild you get a full set of equipment to go with it so just go do that meet him at the quest location there's some dangerous enemies on the way but if you got a decent team you should be fine complete that quest and after a few days he'll appear outside the weapon shop again only this time he'll escort you to the elf village just continue the quest from there and you get full access to the place along with a powerful new archery move only issue remaining is that you can't understand what any of these guys are saying you can't they all speak elvish and if you want to understand it you need a pawn that uh has the woodlands whisperer trait and they'll translate it for you finding one of them not gonna be super easy so uh, your only hope is to kind of randomly run into one while exploring when you do see one be sure to add them to your favorites so you can summon them again if you still want to have access to your guest pawn do the same thing add them to your favorites dismiss them and summon the guy who can speak elf when you're done exploring the town dump them open up your favorites bring the old pawn back we didn't go to the elf village for social reasons so that guy's got no way to earn his keep anywhere else and number six is where to find the sphinx one of the more hidden parts the first half of the game is the sphinx uh this powerful monster is pretty easy to miss uh to find this thing and the many treasures it can give you for solving its riddles you need to fast travel to the ancient battlefield an arena you can access from the road leading toward the checkpoint village this place is swarming with the undead it which shouldn't be too much trouble to handle but there's also a dragon at the entrance which is going to be a problem if you see the drake then your best bet is to leave and find the other entrance to this area that allows you to bypass the beast from there, you find the large castle, and you go inside. You keep going through this place until you find a circular staircase. That leads up to where a cyclops is sleeping. You kill it and look around, you find cave entrance. Cave entrance seems like a dead end, but there's actually a secret passage that can be revealed by attacking a breakable wall. Continue on from there, you eventually get in the mountain shrine, where the sphinx can be found. I trust I have your attention. And number five is opening the Vermund Vault. Uh, past the kitchens and down the random hallway in the castle, Vernworth, there's a mysterious vault door. Of course, you want to open it. There's going to be some sweet treasure inside, right? Yeah, of course. You might be tempted to search the castle for the key, but if you do that, you're never going to find the key because it's not there. It's in a completely different place. Uh, it's actually hidden along the path of the Sphinx in the castle at the end of the ancient battlefield. Specifically, it's in a treasure room in that castle, innocuously hidden in a very standard chest. It's a makeshift key that can be used only once but that's all you need to open the door and walk out with all the rewards, which do include some pretty useful stuff like a powerful shield that may be a necessary item against a certain monster, a whole lot of gold, and a very nice cloak. There's also one thing in there that's mostly just a clue for what you can do with the shield, but let's leave it at that for now. I'm not going to reveal all the game's secrets here, just some useful ones that aren't immediately obvious. And number four, how to catch the guy running from you in the Arisen Shadow Quest. Might sound incredibly basic, but I struggled with it, so I bet a lot of you out there will also. After completing a few main story quests, a mission called Arisen's Shadow pops out of nowhere, and it tells you to contend with your pursuer. I did not know I had a pursuer. You might not even notice him, but if you stay in a place and look around, you'll probably notice a dude in a hood standing in the background who will run away if you walk towards him. Okay, at this point, it's pretty obvious you gotta chase this guy down, but then what? In any regular game, you'd follow him until, I don't know, he goes into a dead end and the cutscene starts, but that doesn't happen here. You chase him, and he keeps running away forever. It took me way too long to figure it out but the answer is pretty simple you grab him r2 slash rt is the button for grabbing when you're fighting a giant monster it's the button that lets you climb on him or grab little monsters and throw them to the ground but when you use the button it makes it so you tackle the guy here that's what you need to do to resolve the quest you <laughs> Sounds really basic when I explain it, but the game does not explain that you're supposed to do this anywhere, and at this point in the game, you might not even know that grabbing's a thing you can do. So, there you go. Hopefully that'll spare you from chasing this guy around for 20 minutes, wondering if the game is broken. And number three is Pawns and Party Creation. This is one of those games that can be a huge pain in the ass, or super easy, depending on how you build your party. There's a few things you absolutely need, like a mage with healing magic, but everything else is mostly down to what your vocation is. Are you a warrior? 
If so, you're going to want some magic users and an archer or a thief. If you're an archer, you want some fighters to draw enemy attention. Same goes for mages. Along with that, having somebody with a lot of stamina who can carry a lot of stuff, crazy helpful. There's a reason why so many people make gigantic fat pawns. Because the bigger and fatter you are, the more stuff you can carry by default. Yes, seriously, that part of character creation actually does matter. It's not just cosmetic. So, uh, there you go. Another important aspect of party management is you want to keep your guest pawns around your level or higher. Recruiting higher level pawns from rifts costs precious rift stones. So, if you happen to find a forgotten rift stone, there are still broken ones that make a pawn appear. And these guys are always high level and free. In this game, level counts for everything. So, having a group of high level pawns... That'll, that's going to be a lot more effective than using ones who synergize well together. So always go for higher levels as long as you've got at least one healer. Seriously, without a healer, you're going to be miserable. It sucks. So have a healer, period. And number two, how to change your character's appearance. Make a new character and realize you messed them up or they look weird in cutscenes or you don't like your design, whatever. There is a way to change things, but it does cost you. In Vernworth, you can go to a barber who will do some basic cosmetic changes for you. The price of like makeup and hair. Welcome, good sir. My services lie in the styling of hair and the painting of faces. But if you want to do major changes, you got to uh, use a special item, the Art of Metamorphosis. It costs 500 Rift Crystals and can be purchased at the Pawn Guild in Vernworth. It's expensive, but if you really need to remake your character, obviously it's worth it. Now just go back to the barber. He can completely redo your character from scratch if you want. You can change literally everything. Um, the only thing you can't do is switch races, so no switch between human and beast trend, but everything else is on the table. It costs a lot of gold on top of everything else so it's not something you can do lightly but at least the options there and finally at number one you can use a cyclops as a bridge ever notice the broken bridges around the world with the holes that are just a little too long to jump across it's not normally possible to cross those gaps without dying but with a little monster assistance getting over these things is actually just a snap all you have to do is just lure a cyclops near the bridge and knock him over i know easier said than done Trying to fight one of these things on a narrow bridge isn't exactly easy, but if you're careful and a little lucky, you're going to be able to knock them down. And that connects the gap between the broken sections of the bridge. Now just use the monster as a makeshift bridge and finish it off however you want. It's stuff like this that makes Dragon's Dogma so interesting. And this is not even the craziest thing you can do by any stretch, but I, I don't want to spoil everything. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.